Warg one. Yo, what you say, my brethren? Today we're doing another thing. <laughs> Today we are doing something slightly different. I'm going to be sharing with you my ranking of the top five most common bases in beatboxing. So this means done by anybody that beatboxes the most common instance of usage. So it's including things like how many beatboxers do that sound or how many times one beatboxer does that sound factoring in a lot. So for this video, I created a short list of bases and I watched a couple of things here and there and I really sat down and thought about it. There is multiple different ways of doing one bass title. For example, tongue bass. But what does that mean? Because <laughs> these are loads of different techniques and positions. So I'm talking more about one singular sound that has minimal variation. Everybody sounds the same when they do it or close to it, kind of, just to avoid that variation. Because those different tongue bases, I kind of give them different names, really. So I'm just going to give you the one singular sound, minimal variation, and give you what I believe is the top five to this day, this time of recording. So in the year 2023, this is the most common five. If you asked me this 10 years ago, huh, completely different. That's the cool thing about it. Some of these bases have only been around for maybe 10 years or less. So here is a list of the top five. Now, it does need to be said, there is 20 plus times more beatboxers or whatever right now than there was all those years ago. So in the past, it doesn't wait as strong as right now. So coming in at fifth place, and its processors, which are also vocalizing. Okay, I think this one sits in fifth. A very versatile bass that you can do. One of the easiest sounds to pull off when you're learning beatbox, but it gets way more complicated to master it and bring new things out. But yeah, the lip bass just comes really and then assert more of a bass intention with it. But this one is in the top five. There is variations of how to do lip basses, like various kind of roles, but I'm I'm talking about right like that. Name me a top beatboxer that can't do that bass. Name me an intermediate or battling level, even battling or battling level beatboxer that cannot do lip bass. I'm pretty sure if you have lips, you can do this bass. So it sits in fifth because it's not often the choice. That's why it's not higher. It's not the choice of base for the composition. Okay, moving on to four. <sighs> this one is chest bass from the chest, of course, and also it's vocalized versions. <laughs> All of those little variations but it all stems from the same sound <sighs> now this is used very commonly at the start bars of beats so <laughs> right there like that and the fact that it can be vocalized and very micro positional changes make different crazy sound effect bass lines to come through it's a very common choice for people to use again easy as well this is in the easy side it's rare to be of a decent beatbox level and not be able to do it. It's rare. <sighs> like that, <laughs> you know? But do people use it or not? Well, I personally don't use a chest bass if it's not vocalized. And I'll only really use it with a, high, a falsetto vocal. I use that sometimes. But the ones that do use it, their entire beatboxing is using it. The ones that have good vocal mastering over it, Use it as the feature sound. It is chosen for the drops. And the ones that use it without vocal are very strong with it and they use it in their standard instant, nothing special kind of beat. 
So it's very common even to this day. I'm interested to see these two, lip bass, chest bass, and where they go in the future. Okay, coming in at third. The third most common bass. That's going to be inward bass. A lot of people's inward bass sounds different. But because it's an inhale through the throat, it means that those little variations are all acceptable to what I consider inward bass. Now, this one is a bit more complicated. Definitely harder than the last two. And that's probably the only reason why it's only in third. Because not everybody can do it. Or even the intermediate beatboxers towards the highest level, there's quite a lot of people that cannot do inward bass or they can only do it a little bit so they don't consider it a comfortable or strong sound so they, they don't do it. The ones that can do it, use it a lot. Me, myself, in my case, I'm actually very known for doing that sound. <coughs> However, I don't choose to use it very often just because that's my preference. It's not my favourite. But it is definitely a fan favourite. A lot of people like this sound. A lot of beatbox fans really enjoy it. <coughs> Understandable, it's overpowered, it's really low frequency, it's very loud volume, and it sounds unrealistically cool. Especially if I was with you in person and I went, <coughs> you'd be like, what? So I put that in third. So what does that mean? There's two left. Are you thinking? Are you a beatbox fan? Are you already thinking of basses? Even if you're not, maybe you can think about sounds you may have heard whenever you've heard beatboxing. Well, second place. <laughs> this is going to be the throat bass. Now, not as easy as the chest bass or the lip bass, not as hard naturally as the inward bass. We have throat bass. This one is an exhale. It is a growl in the throat, somewhat similar to chest bass. And it sits higher than chest bass, even though people that can't do throat bass often do chest bass. And at a beginner level of beatbox, it's hard to diagnose the difference. So chest bass really does sound like this. <sighs> and throat bass really sounds like this. Everybody with throat bass sounds very similar. The difference is the way that you perform it. The factors of the mouth placements and the pitches. But at default tone is throat bass and you will be able to define that always throat bass is slightly more of an old bass and in the new era that we're in currently it isn't used actually that much if you if you was ranking it top five bases right now i don't think it would even be in there but it for years and years it's been the staple go-to bass sound to beatbox with so the history of this bass makes it still to this day second place and people that are really good at it use it a lot i'm good at it i'm not the most elite with that bass and i'm probably better than average with the bass and i use it quite a lot i really like it it's a very easy throat tone you can beatbox over it with a lot of lip and tongue sounds for example if you ever hear this bass then you'll know exactly what it is because it really does sound like that. And it's a very common viral bass, I've noticed. With beatboxers that go viral on online, social media, a lot of the time throat bass is being used. It's a very captivating bass for the general public. And it's also the most natural occurring bass from the lot, you could say, because this is in classic Aborigine pronunciation. So this has already been used by humans prior to beatboxing. Beatboxing didn't find this sound. Some of some bases were found by the practice of beatboxing. This one was not. And then finally into number one. Can you guess it? What might it be? I've got lip roll in number one spot. 
This is called a lip roll. It's basically a better name would be inward lip base. That's how it should be called. But whoever started flinging around the lip roll name back in the day got their wish. Lip roll. But yeah, lip roll or inward lip base. Now, difficulty wise, I'm going to say possibly the hardest one of the bunch. To master inward bass in third is very tricky. But the lip roll is all about learning it, finding the frequency, the method. When you've got it, it's going to be pretty good. And it's fun, not the worst adventure to develop further. Inward bass or some other basses, throat bass, can be really irritating to develop. Lip roll is fun, more simple to develop. But to get it can take years, weeks. There's a massive difference. It's almost luck based sometimes. Just a side note, I have a I have a lip roll tutorial online. If you type my name and lip roll tutorial, it might be a, around somewhere to help you learn it. And if you've got it, well, just feel good about that. Because it is so close to an 808 bass line and a lot of produced bass lines when done correctly. Now, this is tough because there's different methods of lip roll. A very common one is sub bass version, which sounds like which is a different way of going but we're going for like this style of lip roll. In this position, with this level of power, I consider this the most common. That's because I consider this the most common right now, with inward bass as a very close second, but lip roll has been a little bit more prominent for a little bit more years than inward bass has. It all comes down to who is inspired by what. Pioneers create sounds that people obsessed to learn and lip roll and inward bass have definitely been two of those i mean they all have obviously if you think about it they've all been done before and inspired a lot of people i can give some fun shout outs that come across my brain so lip bass i think because of the nature of the sound is so easy to do that i don't think there is many direct inspirations kind of similar for chest bass with inward bass you have uh, a beatboxer from spain called marcus who kind of started pulling it off the first time. You have um, you have myself, uh, Inertia, Vocoda, Villain, Beart. And I hope you understand that I could sit and name a lot. But there were some names that came straight off the bat that may be common to inspiring with that sound. Throat bass, I gotta say Reap's One just springs to mind. I think a lot of people do that bass because of him. It was done pre previous to that in the past. A lot of the French beatboxers were pulling off throat bass as well. I would also say Codfish in a newer era, revamping the sound for people to want to learn. And Lip Roll, uh, definitely Napalm. You got Ball Z, likely myself as well. I was, by the way, really using Lip Rolls before Inward Bass, if you didn't know. So, yeah, um, Ball Z, Napalm, myself. They're more for the bassier type of lip roll as well, though. Other lip roll pioneers, I would also say Frosty. And you have these, like, crazy-ass styles, like... All of this weird stuff. I think um, a Chilean beatboxer called Wally inspired a lot of people with that, too. And I'm obviously missing out big names. So, beatbox fanatics, I'm sorry, okay? I know. I've, I've missed out names, I know. But there's some for you all okay just thought i'd share that some facts with you on top of that so they're my top five most common bases now how how was this format interpreted by you did you like this style of video do i do more or do i not there it is anyway how would this video look in a few years maybe i'll do it see you later everybody and p.s if you have all five of them down you are obviously a beatboxer, aren't you?